Okay, this is going to be a quick video. This is going to show how to export a render out of After Effects, and I'm going to show how to do it using Me Media Encoder, which is an Adobe program that connects to After Effects, and it lets you choose kind of a lot of modern codec settings really easily here. And then in, just in case Media Encoder is not working or you know, there's any kind of glitch that's keeping Media Encoder from working. I'll also show how to export straight out of After Effects, which is kind of the older way of doing it here. So I have my animation right here. And so this is kind of part of our motion tracking assignment right here for the demo. And first thing to remember when getting ready to export is we have our in and out points right here, which is indicated by this gray bar with the blue handles right here. So if I want my animation to be eight seconds long, I'll just drag it out to there. And then when I export it, it'll export all the way up to this point. Just press that and undo because five seconds is good here. So another thing that I like to do before exporting is when I'm working in After Effects, if you see this little button right here, it, if I click on it where it says 8 BPC, you can see right here that's the bit depth, which by default is 8 bits per channel. And I like to work in After Effects at 8 bits per channel because it works quicker and it has less lag to it. But when it comes time to export, particularly when I have a character like this that has gradients over solid colors, when you export at 8 bits per channel, a lot of the times you can get a lot of artifacts and weird aliasing that happens if you export at 8 bits per channel. And so I like to just click this and then change that to 16 bits right there. So again, it's this button right here. Just, I leave it at eight bits, but then when it's time to export, just click there, up here, change that to 16, and then we're good to go. So, all right, so first let's show how to export this in Media Encoder. So I already have Media Encoder open right here, but in order to send this composition to Media Encoder, and so you can see this is shot one, I have a lot of compositions open right now, but I'll just, make sure shot one is selected right here and make sure not not no individual layers are selected so i'll just click off of the layers right there and then in after effects i'll go up to file then down to export and then add to adobe media encoder queue and so if media encoder is not already open you'll click this and it'll kind of boot up for a second and so for me it booted up real quick because i already kind of had it open here and this loaded quickly sometimes shot one right here Sometimes this 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 is the queue right here. Sometimes it'll take it a second for your render to appear, but it appeared really quickly there for me for some reason. So we have right here, I'll just kind of walk through it right here. Um, long story short, this is kind of the most important one right here. This is the output file. So I'll just click on that. And it's, again, I'm clicking right on this where this blue text is right here. And this is gonna set the location and you can name your movie file right here. So I'm just gonna put this right on my desktop and I'll just call it shot one and I'll call it shot one version one and save. So right there, that's, I'm setting the name and the location of the file. And so uh, that's this one. So we have, um, let's go over to the left now. So right here, H.264 is gonna be fine for you at least. Um, as of the time I'm recording this, H.264 is still a good setting right here. So if I click right here, you can see I can also export this. I can choose this, send it out as like a JPEG or a PNG sequence. I have a lot of options, but H.264 is great right there. And again, the default right here is going to be good. So match source high bit rate, that's great. Um, but one thing that Media Encoder does that is nice here is if I click right here, and it'll kind of bring up this option box where I can really dive into the settings and customize the quality of the render here if I need to boost up the settings here. So um, if, you really, if you're still getting aliasing and things like that, I'll first show a way that you can kind of boost up your settings here. So this is the, the bar that kind of, or sorry, the window that popped up. So you look for this little button right here that says use maximum render quality. So you can just click that and check it off. And so now we have this middle tab right here and you can see I have the slider to the right of it. And so I'm just gonna slide down and, oops, I think I missed it. Oh, here we go, it's towards the top. So render at maximum depth right there. And then if you wanna go really the extra mile, I can just continue to slide down and I'm looking for the target bit rate slider right here. 
So by default is at 10, which is a pretty low number. So, you know, maybe if I really want to go for it here, like 30 is the most that I ever do here. Um, and I'll just type it in and now we're okay. So you can see right there is now a custom setting that I did. And so that's just if you're still having aliasing problems and you want to try a render again. And when you're done, you just press this play button that's up here and you'll start the render. Um, before we do that, I just want to show you another thing you can do right here. And again, remember the default's perfectly fine here, um, but you can also have the option to click in here and you can see right here we have presets. And so this is something that's really nice that Media Encoder has is it stays up to date with all these um, websites like Vimeo and YouTube, for instance, where if you're making a video and you know that this is just going straight to Vimeo, you can just choose Vimeo 1080p because again, I'm working in 1920 by 1080. So I'll click that and it just gives me a preset right here and I'm good to go. So that's like the Vimeo preset. So yeah, and so at this point I can just press this play button and it'll render out. And so I'm rendering this in the Vimeo codec. That's a good one. But remember just the one that kind of comes standard, the standard preset is also pretty good in here. So it'll render. And then you can see this blue bar is showing the export and my desktop is a complete mess right now. So let's see if I can find it. Oh, right. And here it is. So if I open it with QuickTime right here, you can see that my animation came out and you can see right here that the gradient on that character is looking pretty decent right there. So the render came out pretty well with, you know, not much pixelation, so that works well. So, okay, so let's say that media encoder is not working for any reason. So we have a backup plan here and definitely consider this your backup plan at this point in time is, so I have my timeline right here, I'm on shot one. And so you can render straight out of uh, After Effects here. So I can just go to file and then export and then add to render queue. So instead of media encoder queue, just add to render queue. And so it's going to add to After Effects internal render queue that shows up, it'll kind of pop up in your timeline down here. You can see I have an older render that I did right here. I'll just delete that. And you can see it's called shot one. And I have kind of three similar settings right here. So right here, if I click this open, I have, um, this is a tab you're not really gonna wanna mess with, honestly. So I almost don't even wanna bother messing with it, but you could kind of set right here, you can click where it says best settings. And if you wanna render it like half res, you could hypothetically click on this and then change this down to like half right there and it'll render at SD rather than HD. But I don't know why you'd ever want that. So um, let's see, we have that. We have this right here, which is the output mode. So I'll click on this and right here, so again, I clicked where it said high quality right there and it brought up this window. And by default, it's gonna render at Apple ProRes 422. It's RGB, millions of colors, pre-multiplied. So this is a good setting most of the time. So most of the time you can just press okay on that and you're good. And then finally here, I'll just click right here and this is the output two and then you can name it as well. So again, I'm gonna export this to my messy desktop here. I'll call this shot one version two and say save. And so for most of the time, I can just press render right here and it'll render out. So sometimes where the render queue can be really helpful here is if you wanna render something out and have an alpha channel going on behind it. So let's just say I don't have this footage back here and I want this to render out as if these two characters are on a see-through background so I can overlay it on top of other footage, for instance. You could uh, click in here where it says custom quick time right now. And then under format options, I could kind of stick with Apple ProRes. You can see I have a lot of other options in here, um, but you can see right here, if I wanted it to um, have an alpha channel, I would uh, ignore the channels part, go to depth and then go to, oh, right. Apple Pro, ProRes can't do an alpha channel. So first step is if I want an alpha channels, I would click the format options go to the animation setting right here. So the just go from here to here, press okay. And then here where it says depth, I would click on 
oh, I'm sorry, where it says channels, I would click and say RGB plus alpha so that I would get the alpha channel coming through. And I'll say millions of colors plus, and we're good to go. And so if you wanted an alpha channel in your background, you just press OK, and you'd be good to go. But again, I don't need an alpha channel for this, so I'm just going to cancel that. And when you're ready to render here, you just press the render button, and it'll go through. And you can see that the render will begin to do its thing. Okay, so that render took a bit longer. And so if we look over here, so this is the one that came out of Media, Media Encoder Queue. This is the one that came out of uh, Adobe's uh, normal render queue here. And so if I look at this one, it plays back. And so that is how you export using both the After Effects internal Media Encoder or Render Queue and then the Media Encoder.